I really love the snow. When I was three years old, I looked out the back door of my home in Illinois and stated to my mother, the best day in a girl's life is the first day it snows. My mother, who spent most of her life in Florida, was understandably perplexed by my sentiment. She dislikes the cold in winter, as do I, but there's just something about snow that makes it all worth it. Snow makes me pretentious. When I realized it was snowing last night, I opened my blinds, sat on my bed, and read poetry for an hour. There's something about indescribable beauty that makes me long to find the right words to describe it. There have only been a few other moments in my life that I had to resort to purely poetic language to describe them. But every time I watch the snow, I just... I have this feeling that's impossible to explain correctly. Language is a beautiful thing. It allows us to communicate intricately with others. It allows us to express our desires, our needs, our feelings. It brings us together as humans. But language can't express some emotions. Wonder, awe, a sense of our place in the universe. The swelling of your heart when you see something so, so beautiful that there are no words to describe it. No words. That's how I feel about snow. Magical is the best word I have because it's not a word that I use very often. It's reserved for those things that make me feel the most content, the most at home. Christmas lights, stargazing on a clear night, silently walking through the woods, playing the piano, and snow. People talk about their happy places. Well, those are my happy places. Those are the things that make me feel full, peaceful, as though nothing in the world could ruin those moments. Things that make me feel like no matter what happens, it's going to be a good day. This morning, I got up, and I decided to go out into the snow. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm gonna go explore. Snow makes me feel like that three-year-old again. Like, the biggest and most exciting thing in my entire universe is the idea that I get to bundle up, open my door, and step out into this great expanse of white. The first thing I looked for was a blank patch of snow. There's something enjoyably destructive about rolling around in an unmarked area of snow. It's that thrill that you get when you're small and you knock over a tower of blocks. This brief pain in your chest as you destroy something beautiful, followed by a perverse pleasure at being the one whose hand caused the destruction. There were a few kids out having snowball fights and building snowmen. I even found this guy, who I was very impressed with as my efforts to make a snowball and the leftover powder went, eh, not so well. Snow in the South is weird. A lot of it turns to ice, and people don't know how to drive on the roads because there's no plows. The weirdest part of my journey was when I went over to my apartment complex's outdoor pool. The pool is heated, so no ice had formed, but the rest of the deck was covered in snow. Again, it's a feeling that's hard to describe, to see something so out of place against the backdrop of something else. A lot of poetry about snow is very depressing. Some is hopeful, looking forward to spring, but not a lot celebrates the clean, fresh, new feeling that snow brings to the world, how it falls on the leafless trees and makes them into something from a storybook, how it makes even the dumpster behind my apartment complex seem magical. Even people who use descriptive language all the time find it difficult to express how snow feels. My favorite poem about snow, which is actually a poem I read in high school, and wow, that took me back, is Emily Dickinson's It Sifts from Leaden Sieves. It goes like this. It sifts from leaden sieves, it powders all the wood, it fills with alabaster wool the wrinkles of the road. It makes an even face of mountain and of plain, unbroken forehead from the east and to the east again. It reaches to the fence, it wraps it, rail by rail, till it is lost in fleeces, It flings a crystal veil on stump and stack and stem, the summer's empty room, acres of seams where harvests were, recordless but for them. It ruffles wrists of posts as ankles of a queen, then stills its artisans like ghosts, denying they have been. When I finally got too cold, I came back inside to celebrate my second favorite part about snow, the feeling of coming in, stripping off the layers, making a cup of coffee, warm against the cold, cold wind outside, finding a spot I love in my apartment, and getting to work. And I felt content.